Hello, my friend. It is Monday night. I'm Pat Sloan for my fireside chat. I love on Monday nights that in the premiere of the video, more of you can visit because it runs uh, in the evening. So yes, thank you for being here. Today is checking in with your elephants, your Ellie's. So I am officially done with my elephant and I will show you what it looks like on the wall above my bed. And I am so excited that it actually fit almost perfectly. I was afraid that I had made it a little bit too long, uh, but it turns out it is perfect that I, I don't know, I don't know, I lucked out. So my Ellie's are done. Oh, there are still loads of people sewing on their elephants, the stomping ground from Wendy. Link is below to the, um, to my website and to her pattern so that you can pick one up if you didn't get started yet they are just so darn cute i've seen table runners and bolster pillows and single pillows like i did i mean there's just been tons all kinds of colorways some of you have enhanced them with adding palm trees and uh, fancy borders so it's been delightful to sew along with these uh, elephants from my buddy wendy Okay, it's also UFO, UFO, second half of February, our Area 51 cleanup. So I, where is it? So let's see, I've got my worksheet. Ta-da, so I put down on my worksheet what I've gotten done. So let's take a tally in week, it was two weeks, like 14 days, maybe 13 days, you know. Uh, so I've done the elephant, I finished the elephant, which actually was not a uh, UFO, but I'm going to count it anyways. <laughs> the stay at home quilt is finished. The uh, traffic jam is finished. I got basted to the flower quilts. So that's this one over here. The four flowers done with the Tula pink fabric. This is basted. Now I am actually going to quilt this one next. So here it is again. So Ta -da. Uh, and I've shown this a couple times if you go back on the videos but this one I want to quilt next because it's got so much green in it it's purple and green and teal uh, you know, look green flower yes so it'd be perfect for hanging up in March so that's why that one will be next so on my list I also had uh, grandma's kitchen so I'm going to tell you about that in a second. I have got the table runner. So that's for the second half here. Then I have my pillow shams and the bonus of the Florida quilt. So the pillow shams and Florida quilt. The Florida quilt is on its way here from the spa. Uh, so because of the weather <laughs> lately, uh, it, it's been a little delayed uh, traveling, so I don't know when it's going to arrive. But when it does, if the other things are finished, I will get a photo, you know, of it. Uh, I will maybe get it trimmed. That'll be good. But I don't know if I'll get the binding on in February. That might be pushing it because uh, I, I am doing these UFO challenges. It's not my full-time job to do a UFO challenge. <laughs> so this is what I do in the evening, like after nine o'clock. So it depends on what I can fit in and what I can accomplish, you know, how much of this gets done. But I think it might be very doable to get everything and then either start the pillow shams. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get them worked on. I'm, they're not probably going to be finished. And then if the, if the Florida quilt comes first, it'll go before the pillow shams so I can get binding on it. All right, so let me tell you about the grandma's kitchen because sometimes <laughs> you, you, you get to a project, right? You get a project and you're like, what was I doing? What, where was my brain? What was I thinking? How in the heck did this happen? So let me first show you this picture. I was trimming the grandma's kitchen and I had already put sections together. This was done quilt as you go. So I put the sections together and lo and behold, one section was about a half an inch too short. I could not trim the whole side to meet that half an inch deficit. <laughs> it was like, because I would cut off points on other blocks. So I was going to have to add some fabric and then trim. Rather than adding exact amount, add more and then trim it back. But because this was quilt as you go um, and 
uh, that means I have seams to cover, which was a little bit more tedious, but not horrible. So I have, let's show you a few pictures there of what I did. I ended up, let's just take, you can take a look at it down here on the table. Uh, so I do have, here's the front, and here's what you saw that I was adding this strip and this strip because it was a pretty it was pretty long section I had to it was a whole bottom section that needed to have uh, <laughs> needed needed some help there we go uh, so I also have at this part here is the quilt that you go and there's a bunch of um, photos I did of the quilt if you go and the videos and all kinds of stuff at my I love to make quilts website so what I did is I ended up taking these two strips layering it with batting and backing and sewing it on quilt as you go a like one and a half inch strip and then I did one straight stitch and then I trimmed it so now I have the covering that's what this is here uh, so come in a little closer so I have to cover the seams because quilt as you go you're going to have these these seams on the back and so I need to cover it with like a strip of fabric. And I've already hand stitched this down and then now the edge is for the binding. So the binding will go on. The binding will go on. It sounds like a movie, doesn't it? <laughs> the show will go on. It will get binding. <laughs> and so I had saved off the stripe, the little green, yeah, the green stripe. And I will do the binding with this and I think I am going to do the binding by machine. Often I like to do the stripes with uh, by hand, but I would rather have this done. So you make decisions. So this is my grandma's kitchen. I can show you part of it here. I'm on the back side of my table, so I have very little room. I'm right up against the wall here with, oh, did you see my seasons quilt? Have you seen a couple of you asked about it? So ta-da, that's with the Morrison Park. I get to look at this all day on the back side of my room. <laughs> There's still kits for these too, so I'll link that below. If you want to make it, it is a super fun quilt to make, all with my Morrison Park. Uh, all right, so here, here you go. Here's part of the grandma's kitchen. This was done with a really pastel line, soft pink, soft gray, soft turquoise, soft green. Uh, so it's really, really pretty. I love it. Um, and that, that will get done. The binding will go on. <laughs> so, and it will go on next. That is my next UFO, is to put the binding on that guy because it's important. <laughs> it's important for me to get him done. It's way, way, way beyond due being, being done. What did we do that one in 2019, I think? Um, yeah, so needs the binding. All right, let's talk shamrocks. <laughs> I promise to have the applique done. So here is the applique shape. And I thought I would draw one because I haven't actually put them on my table runner yet. So here is the table runner from How Tall Am I in our home is so along and it is going to have green shamrocks. So let's take a look at that. So what I did is I auditioned a few green fabrics and ultimately decided that this would be the one I wanted to use. Uh, so I like it, there'll be three shamrocks, one, two, and then three out, out on the other end. So I want to trace and show you how I do a shamrock. Let's, I've got, I've got all the parts here. So let me be sure I don't turn off my video with the clicker, move it out of the danger zone. So let's come in here a little bit and I'll get, uh, here we go, get you down here. So the pattern you will print to trace from for the fusible applique, I'm going to do fusible applique by machine. Your stem will be reversed there we go, because this is reversed so that when you put it on the quilt, it'll be this way. So the stem will curve the other way. Now I am using heat and bond light 
And you can tell that's what it is. It's got on the bottom. And it's the light. It's in a lavender bag. If Don't buy the red one. The red one is not for sewing. It is a crafting bond. So I can see through here really well. I don't have any problem uh, seeing through here. And then I will trace it. So that is what I do. I take a pen, a pencil, whatever you like to draw with. And when I trace, I am not like sketching. I'm not going like this and sketching. I'm just taking my hand and naturally following the line. Because you know, shamrocks are not all going to be identical. So I like to give it a little personality just by doing my hand drawing really nice and smooth. And then you also have a chance when you're cutting this out to once again change the form of it. You know, so if you want to smooth out with your hand drawn line, you can do that when you're cutting it. Now I'm going to show you how I cut this out. So I'm going to use these scissors. These are Havel scissors. Let's talk for a minute. <laughs> I think that the scissors for cutting out, like especially cutting out applique are super important because they are something you're gonna be holding for a while and you don't want your hands to ache. This is called a shear and it has this angle which I think is really ergonomic and it has three holes which I find very useful to get all my fingers in there and then the thumb. And this is how I hold it, thumb in it, three fingers in the bottom. I don't do anything crazy like sticking my fingers out on the top. It's, it's angled and it's done, this is how you, you're to hold it. Um, it. These are also long, which I like for everything. Now I use the same paper and, uh, I use the same scissors for paper and for fabric. I know some people don't like to do that. I have done it for 40 years. <laughs> You know, I mean, I sewed clothing before this, so it was a long time, uh, probably more than more than like 50 years of, of sewing. So I don't really need to have, I've never had a problem with them. Paper is not made like it used to be made. It's not made with wood pulp anymore and, you know, rough. So it's not going to really damage your scissors at all. The paper is really easy. So you've got a fusible on the back. That's this stuff, this adhesive, okay, you can see it. And then here's the shamrock. Now, I need to have some area around the outside of the shamrock, particularly because this is kind of large, so that you need to be able to put it down onto the fabric. What I'm going to do next is cut out the center of it so that it's nice and soft. I'll hold it up here. So when I cut it, I will cut through the line like this and then trim around. Now this uh, is sort of like watching paint dry, but I wanna do it for you for this whole shape because some of you are fairly new. I'm cutting in here, new to applique, new to fusible applique. So I'm cutting in here about a fourth of an inch. Less is better, but because I'm holding it and doing all this a fourth of an inch, I don't wanna get too close and cut, cut too much. I do not cut the stem. I'll leave that full fusible. What this does is let your applique be really soft. This is all outlined and shown in my applique book so that you can see everything step with step-by-step -step photos that I'm showing you here. All right, we're almost done. And then we are going to fuse it to our fabric. Okay, da -da 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 -da. there we go. So now this is the middle. So this is something <clears throat> you can <clears throat> reuse like you can go ahead and save this and put um, you know make little circles or small leaves or small or other shapes so put this in a ziploc bag and save it for another project this will all go onto your fabric that is to make the shamrock and the shamrock you know it's a pretty big shape it's the size of the all the full piece of paper so I'm working with the little mini Oliso iron, which comes with a uh, stand, you know, a silicon stand here so that you can put it down. Uh, it's, that's how it's made to, to sit. So you just pick it up and use it. Now I am on my cutting mat and my table. Normally I would put these on my ironing board just to be absolutely sure no heat is going all the way through. And same with this, I would not lay this on here. I mean, I would not, here, I got some. Yeah, I would not lay the silicon right on here because it, it, it gets warm. 
and I don't want to warp my mat or damage my table. So let's just, there we go. I need to put, get you over on this side. All right, so just for a few seconds, it is not gonna hurt anything. It's not like it's heat, it, I just felt it, that it's totally fine for the amount of time I'm doing this, but you don't want to do that all for all the time. Uh, now I wanna be sure there's no wrinkles uh, because they will change the shape of your applique um, uh, item if you have a wrinkle in there. So here is my shamrock, and I will so be sure I've got fabric covering this little wool mat. So this is the little wool mat. They're really thick. The ones that I like, I will link below. Okay, so I am going to do the shamrock. Now you can see where I cut through the line to, to cut out of the middle. Uh, and so let me just talk about that one second. So the reason I cut out the middle by by going through the line like this is because I don't want to pinch the fabric. I don't want to pinch the fabric like this. I mean, pinch the paper and the adhesive like this and then cut it and then try to sew out, cut out the middle. Because when you pinch it, you're introducing a release point to the fusible and the paper. When you do that, the paper and the fusible have a higher probability of separating. And if you've done a lot of fusible, you've probably run into some products that separate and you, they're, they're unusable, they're, they're aggravating, uh, and so you don't want that. Heat and Bond Light is super dependable. It rarely releases the fusible from the paper. But if you go around making folds in it, that is how you release the paper. So you don't wanna make folds. Okay, so you just cut through the line and you can get right to it. So remember, I am on a wool mat right here, and my whole shamrock fits on the wool mat. See, here's the edge of it. So I will be able to, to do this. Now, what I wanna do is I don't wanna start pressing at the seam. I wanna press, uh, at the cut rather, I wanna press on the opposite side, the opposite side of the cut, and press towards it. And then if there's like a little gap, if there's a little gap, or if for some reason, it jumps up and folds over. Neither of these are a problem. You will cut it, you will cut the final size. This is not the final size. You still have to cut the final size. So you can change and adhere that. And even if there is a small little gap like this, your applique is not gonna fall off because you're still going to uh, sew it with your, um, your sewing machine. You're gonna put on a blanket stitch or you're gonna hand stitch it, however you do it. So I'm taking the Aliso iron. I use it on hot. And you only hold it a few seconds in each spot. You are not cooking a roast, so you don't want to be uh, holding it down for a really long time. It's just a few seconds, so I'll show you. It's sort of like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three around, one, two, three, and be sure you get all the spots. So like, you know, in the little uh, insides of each shamrock, one, two, three, and then get the back side here. Okay, so that is my whole uh, shamrock. He's all fused down, so he's not going to fall off at all. And then at this point, I will cut it out. You know, I will cut out the shamrock on the line. Now let me just cut away here a minute, and let me talk a little bit about what we have uh, so that you can see what's going on. This is, this is, none of this is hard so far. You have traced you have cut, you have pressed. Now you're gonna cut again, and you're gonna press again, and then you're gonna sew. Uh, so none of the steps that I've showed you are hard. You do this stuff all the time. You can trace things, uh, and you can cut things on, you know, so you're good. You can do this. There we are. Now to cut this, you cut on the line. You are creating your final shape. This is raw edge applique, and your raw edge will be let me just, I'll just let you watch me while I talk, okay? So your raw edge will be under your thread eventually. Whoops. <laughs> nothing, like, nothing like cutting on the screen. So one of the nice things about this is that as you're cutting, you can decide to um, you know, change the shape a little bit. So you can smooth out your hand drawing and be sure it's exactly like you want it. All right. So this is a big shape. Now, 
Okay, now I get that stem done. All right, the stem's done. Go around the outside, super easy. Now, if you are fusing this, let me give you a tip about irons. If you're fusing this and you're having some trouble with, your, uh, with it sticking, 90% of the time, if not more, it is going to be because your iron is not hot enough. So check your iron, use a different iron. You occasionally have things, that, the fabric that won't stick, the adhesive won't stick to the fabric because it has resins, because it's not pre-washed. But I find that most of the time that does not happen, uh, but occasionally it does. Okay, so we're almost all the way around. I use a hot iron, like, you know, cotton setting and it works all the time, so I don't need to actually change the setting from my pressing to doing this. So there we go, there is our shamrock, and we're going to go ahead and uh, get my, get the table runner and put it down here a minute, and see a shamrock on it. It's messy back here on the work table. Okay, so here's a shamrock on the table runner, so fun. So you can make, play around with the, the layout of it. You know, do you want, um, you know, you, I put three. I kind of put them right down the middle, one, two, three. Uh, but you might decide you want, maybe you want three in one, in one corner, or maybe you're really a symmetrical person and you would like to do uh, three or four. You could do four in the middle, like, you know, one, two, three, four. You could do in the center of your table runner. You could just put one you know, in your corner and be done. Uh, so there you go. You have a way to play around with applique and create, uh, uh, create shamrocks for the look of the Irish. Yes. <laughs> we'll talk more about this. I will do another segment on blanket stitching, although I have done that quite a bit in the past, but I will do another one just with this project and give you, show you. You can also go uh, get my applique book, which gives you all of this information, and you can uh, see it. There's a tutorial page. My tutorial page also has some tips on how to do the different parts of fusible applique. So I've given it to you in a lot of places. Um, remember, I've done a lot of things on the internet. So it's like I have written articles for all oh, close to 20 years. So there's lots and lots of stuff out there to look at. Um, which brings me to something I want uh, to remind everybody about for the home is, speaking of finding on the internet. <laughs> for some reason, there's a few people, I know not all of you because you've actually put your first row together, but there's, a, there's some people that somehow missed the layout directions. There was a whole separate PDF with the layout directions for the home is. And I gave that to you early so that you could build your rows as you go along, which is much more fun than at the end having all these blocks and having to go through and build your whole quilt. Um, everybody seems to like this method and I've been doing it for years and years. So here I wanna show you. This is the home is page at my website. It is the project page and at the end of the project page is a table with each block and the layout. If you click the layout, it opens a it it opens a PDF which you will download and you can see on the PDF there's multiple pages. I even had somebody say they they got they opened it but they couldn't find the directions. So I guess they only looked at page 1 because after page 1 are all the directions and the layout with sizes. So just look past page 1 when you open the PDF, okay? And if you see somebody asking, please send them to the project page, not the PDF. People, they don't, you don't learn anything if you just get linked to a PDF. You don't learn how to find things for yourself. Every project has a project page and on it is the information, the supply list, each block and the layout, okay? <laughs> Thank you, thank you for helping each other. That helps me so that I don't have to constantly be repeating um, you know, information. You can help each other and nobody has to wait for me to give the information because I'm not on there 24 seven. So that is fabulous. Thank you, thank you. Mwah. You are the best, the best, the best. Let's see. So you know the shamrock now. You'll be able to download that. Uh, 
if you're going to do that, you can put shamrocks on anything you have, you know, you don't it doesn't have to be that particular pattern. Um, so I was thinking the other day, I was doing some, uh, you know, some stuff and I thought, ah, oh, you know, I wish I had some bigger pieces of fabric. I was working on a project and I just had fat quarters, which were not enough. And so that got me thinking about how I've been buying recently, because I think I mentioned this recently, I have been buying and getting lots of sampler bundles and things like that, where it's only a fat quarter in there, which is fabulous. But if I decide on Saturday night to try to do something and I only have fat quarters, uh, I can't always complete a project. So I'm looking to sort of adjust how I buy some basics so I can get some different basics with some, in, in, at least like maybe one yard pieces, a sort of group of basics. Anyways, I thought I'd just share that. <laughs> Sharing is caring, right? Yes, is that right? I don't know. Okay, we also have last thing. Da, 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 is for March, we're going to do a block a day again. We haven't done a block a day for quite a while. And I thought to celebrate March, which is sort of getting out of winter for me anyways, uh, and also a one year of pandemic craziness, uh, we should do hope, hope, hope. So this is our March hope quilt and block. So you can link down link it at my uh, website today and it's also on the calendar page at my sew along website. I love to make quilts. There's a calendar project page which has all of these daily ones. Now I showed you these fabrics. Let me just pull this over. Here's just a few of them. I showed you this fabric bundle the other day when I mentioned we might do this uh, and it has some black and white prints. Remember it had the swan. Uh, and the black and white and the pineapples and peach and these crazy cats and this awesome whales. Then it has these bigger prints and I went and it had a yellow and a pink. And so I went and found a black and white polka dot and some other small black prints. Um, I'm also going to add in some pieces that are uh, also in these other colors. You know, so like I'm going to go through my own stash and get some turquoises and pinks, I think that'll probably be maybe my heavier focus, turquoises and pinks. Uh, and I may actually remove the green. I might take this green and remove it and just do these salmons and pinks um, and black and white and turquoise. So that is what this, that, won't that be like, won't that be so exciting, so like vibrant and happy and just make your soul like sing? That's what I need. I need for March, March hope. So we will do this one block a day. It is an easy uh, square with rectangles. So for those of you, then I do have corners. So for those of you who do not want to do corners, you can leave them off. For those of you who want to spiff up the quilt and do the corners, you can do the corners, which are sew and flip. So it's an option. I like options. I know you like options. <laughs> Thank you, my friends. Thank you for being here on Monday night. All the links are below while you're there. If you would subscribe so that we can visit again uh, and you can get a notice and know whenever the new video comes up. Uh, so I love you. Thank you for being here. Mwah. See you online.